God and for him. In the book of the seven seals, some call him the rose of Sharon, others call him the prince of peace. But see,
and give God a praise in this building. Come on, give him a praise. He's worthy. Lift those hands to heaven and there's a miracle in this house waiting for you. There's a miracle in this house waiting for you. I'm next in line and I want my blessing too. Somebody said there's a miracle waiting for you. There's a breakthrough in this house waiting for you. I'm next in line, and I want my breakthrough too. How many know there's joy in this house? Waiting, waiting for you. I'm next in line, and I want my my joy too. Anybody back there want your joy? Kind of lift those hands and hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over the sanctuary cry hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's here today. That rock is here. We're singing about that rock. That rock is here. There's a miracle in this house. There's a miracle in this house. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. I'm next in line. I'm next in line. I want my miracle too. Look at your neighbor and tell him there's a miracle in this house. A miracle in this house. Waiting for you. Waiting for you. But I'm next in line. I'm next in tell him I'm next in line. And I want my I want miracle too. There's healing in this house. There's healing in this house. 
waiting for you. It's waiting for you. But I'm next in line. You're next in line. And I want my healing too. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on and praise it. Come on. next in line. I'm next in line. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, I'm next in line. Tell him thank you right now. Tell him thank you. Jesus. Jesus is here. Oh, hold on. Somebody feel him. It's right there in your pews today. There's a word from the Lord. That's in Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18 and, and verse 4, very, very short verse. But it's two, two different parts to it, and it's so powerful. And we're going to read it today. It's so powerful. Because when God began to speak to me through this one verse, it meant so much. Because we're living in a time and an area now where people are dealing with so much damage in their lives. Hurt disappointment, rejection, and we are so distorted because the devil has a bait. And his biggest bait is to have you in a position of wounded. Wounded. Wounded in your spirit. Can I help somebody? You can be saved. You can be coming to church and be wounded in your spirit. You cannot worship like you ought to worship. And I'm speaking to somebody that's watching me by air, and you're watching me here, and you, you, you're saying, I, you're talking to me, Pastor Hare, and if you just draw it in close to me, zoom me in. I want to zoom right into that home right now. I'm speaking to you right now. For those of you who just be bear with me as I speak to this person. I want you to place your hand on that screen. You've been wounded and hurt. And it's caused you to be where you are right now watching me. You don't want to be around people because you feel like you're going to explode. Because at the minute somebody says something to you, you're going to explode. But I need you to lay your hands on my hand. Today is a day of restoration. Those of you who are here right now in this worship place, today is a day of restoration. They sung Jesus is a rock. He's a rock. He's the rock of your salvation. And I want to talk to you this morning and tell you that he's here to heal that wound whatever wound you got wherever you've been hurt today wherever you've been damaged in life and you've been trying to go on and go on and you're carrying it with you you will no longer carry that hurt after today in Jesus name in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 4, he said, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Hmm. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Oh, you've been preached to, you've been talked to. I want to talk about today, in spite of it all. Let God work. 
in spite of it all, let God work. You can be seated in the presence of God. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. Did you not know that your spirit, your spirit will keep you alive? Your spirit will heal your body? If you have the right spirit, if you have the right spirit, it would help you overcome a lot of things. I don't care how sick physically you are, if your spirit has a will to live, you're going to live. Because your spirit, the Bible says here, the spirit of a man will sustain any kind of infirmity. You know, well, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know if I'm, let me tell you, your spirit will sustain any infirmity because it is a spiritual thing. It is your will. If you want to lay down and die, you're going to die. If you want to get up and live, you're going to live. If you want to be, you can be. If you don't want to be, you won't be. If you think you can win, you can win. Because the spirit of a man is a mindset. Whatever you want out of life is a mindset. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. If you want to do it bad enough and you have a will to want to do it. But when you go into something already negative, you already lost. There, there was a man, there was a man that was going down a country road. He was going down a country road. And on this country road, late at night, he, he never knew nothing about the country, but he was on a country road, and all of a sudden, his car broke down. No lights, nothing out there in the middle of nowhere. So he walks down the road, and all of a sudden, way down by this creek, looked like a jungle, a man lived back in the woods. And you know what he said? He said to himself, he began to speak to himself, and he said to himself, you know what, if I, if I get there, anybody that's living down in the woods like this is a, a menace. He got to be crazy. He got to be stupid to be living in the woods like this. So he talked to himself about the man, so much. So he gets to the man's house. As soon as the man opens the door, guess what he do? He punched the man in the face. Because he had already made up his mind, the man was crazy to be living in the woods like that. So what are you saying, Pastor Hale? I am saying this, that what are you saying to yourself? What are you rehearsing in your thoughts every day? Whatever you're rehearsing in your thoughts and when you come to a situation, you already got it figured out because of your mindset. He had put all this in his mind about the country and somebody living like that, that this is a bad person. So when you meet challenges, what have you rehearsed in your mind when you meet people? Or when you come into a confrontation or something, you already have a mindset that you've been dealing with all of your days every day. And all of a sudden, it comes out. This man could help him. He punches him. Do you punch the people that could possibly help you? Because you, they look like what you've been rehearsing. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. He said, renew your mind. Then it says, cast down every imagination that exalts itself above the wisdom and the knowledge of God. 
Many people live life hurt and wounded, and they live how they've been hurt. They've been hurt, and they blame other folk for something that's going on with them because they got up this wall. They got something up, and they thinking people are trying to hurt them because they've been hurt. And then sometimes the reason why they don't understand that they got hurt, and then when they've been hurt that way, what happens is that person may have been hurt themselves that hurt you. So you have to reflect on why did that person say to me what they said to me. There are a lot of people, you're sitting at home and you left the church. You didn't leave before the pandemic, but you left after the pandemic. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about a lot of churches because you were already hurt. Now you already had an excuse to not come back to church. Can I get a witness? Because you, found, you sit at home and you talk, thought about it and you say, you know what? I didn't want to go nowhere. Because somebody hurt me. But then you need to reflect upon why the person said to you what they said to you. Why did they say? It may have not been about you. I always look at the person that brings the bone. When I read scripture, I don't just read one scripture and I say, that's it. What I do is why Paul said what he said. I go back in other scriptures and talk about it. I get a foundation of why he said what he said. Don't just take that one thing. When you get a foundation, then you get a solid meaning of what's going on. Sometimes people say something to you. It's out of their hurt. It has nothing to do with you. Come on, somebody. And then you can go back and say, you know what? I know why she said that. She going through Hallelujah. And then you can lift your hands because God got a breakthrough for you and you can't get your breakthrough because you wounded. You can't lift your hands in worship. You can't praise God because you're at church, but you can't worship him like you ought to worship him because you're wounded. But if your spirit is right in the midst of everything, you can still lift your hands. I don't care who don't speak to me. I don't care who talk about me. I don't care what they've done to me. I can still lift my hand and say, God, I love you. God, you're still good to me. In spite of it all, let God work. Because if I'm going through something, God is taking me through it. Ain't nobody taking me through nothing. Ain't nobody done nothing to me to take me through. What God got me in, he got my back. If he need to wear it out, let him wear it out. Hit, hit me while I'm going through. He's my daddy. Why, why can't I go through? Because I know when daddy get through whooping me, he still loved me. The reason why he whooping me, he loved me. And I, and I said, well, whoop me. Hit me one more time because I know that uh, it's hurting you just like it's hurting Hurt me. That's what my mama used to say. This hurt me too, but I'm going to beat you. That's what God said. It's hurt me too. I love you. You're my child. I got you. And I said, just let God work. Somebody say, in spite of it all, let God, let him work. Uh, Pastor Hal, how do I get my spirit right? You got to learn how to rule your spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, learn how to rule your spirit. Don't let your spirit rule you. Proverbs 25 and 28 says these words. It said, he that had no rule over his own spirit, come on, is like a city that is broken down and without walls. See, if you can't rule your spirit, the devil will come in and have you acting a fool. See, if the cities back in the Old Testament, if they didn't have walls, the armies come in and take them. Uh-oh. See, when the walls break down, the devil can come in and out as he wants to. People can come in and mess up your life as they want to if your spirit not right. 
if you're not ruling your spirit right, they could come and say stuff to you and you'll jump on their bandwagon. Can I get a witness? I feel like preaching here today and I wish I had... Listen to me. That people will come in your life, say stuff to you, you broken down. You don't have no defense because your spirit not right. You already discouraged, you wounded. Here they come. Can I get a witness? The Bible says it's like a city don't have no walls. It's just that in the United States, if we don't have no defense, Russia can come over here and whoop us. They can come in as they will and whip us if we don't have no walls. But we got an army waiting. <laughs> you got to have an army. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual. How many know you got to be And having, putting on the whole honor of God. And the first thing you got is the helmet. You don't need nothing to hit your head. So because what people say going in your mind. And once it goes in your mind, if you don't have the shield of faith to protect your, your chest, that breastplate, guess what's going to happen? Them things going to go down into your heart and get in your heart. And you're going to start having a wounded spirit. Preacher trying to preach. Your spirit's so wounded, you can't say amen. You so wounded. You, 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 your, your children hate to see you coming. You so wounded. Your wife hate to see you coming. You so wounded. Your husband hate to see you coming. Because you're going to snap on everybody. Any little thing. Come on. It ain't got nothing to do with what was going on then. It's got something to do with what's going on on the inside of you. You're wounded, and wounded people wound other people. Can I help you? I said wounded people wound other people. I found out hurt people will damage you. And that's why I said a few minutes ago, look at what they said and why they said it and kind of look at their background. And you know then that they really don't mean what they said to me. And if you got the joy of the Lord, they can't hurt you. The mean things they say don't make me feel bad because I got Jesus. I don't care what people say and what they do to me. When you got Jesus in your life, it will not wound you to where you don't want to come to church. Ain't nothing you can do to me to stop me from coming to church. Well, I quit coming to church because they, they, they said something to me. Okay. You was already hurt. Ain't nobody hurt you that bad. You can't, I done seen them talk about you and call you everything in school when you came back to school. They talked about you and your boyfriend at the party, but you went back to the next one. I wish I had some help here. Ain't God all right? You got to rule your spirit. Proverbs 16 and 32 says these words. He said, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. If you can rule your spirit, you, you own Macomb. <laughs> You better than the person that can run Macomb. Take the whole city. You better than that person. If you can just rule your spirit. Let your spirit be positive. Oh, ain't God all right. Somebody say a word, a word. And it's tailor-made just for you because somebody has wounded you in life. And you got to learn how to rule your spirit. Ain't God all right. Job, he had it right. Job was ruling his spirit. In Job 1, 21 and 22, man, I, that, that's my man. I love it. He says, naked. Oh. After he done lost everything. He said, naked. <laughs> I came out of my mother's womb. I ain't had nothing when I got here. And naked, 
I shall return. The Lord gave. And the Lord take it away. Oh, ain't God all right. Bless. I'm going to churches. I, I lost my car. I lost my job. Lost my house. But I'm going to church and say, Bless be the name of the Lord. I don't care how much hell and high water you go through. Lift those hands and say, I've been through hell. But guess what? I'm still going to lift my hand because I'm going to rule my spirit. The devil's not going to give a negative spirit to me. Bless. 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 Be the name of the Lord. I didn't have nothing when I came here. And I ain't going to have nothing when I leave. I don't see my house behind the hearse. Ain't no clothes. The suit they have me on, they're going to cut the back out of it. I wish I had some help here. Somebody wave your hand and tell them thank you. I like that spirit. But one thing I, I didn't like, I don't know what happened from Job 1, 21 through 22 to Job 3 and 1 through 5. Something happened. He was praising God. He lost it. But he said, bless God. But all of a sudden, something happened. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. After this, opened Job his mouth and cursed the day. What happened? Mm -mm. You just got up and shouted. You just said, bless the name of the Lord. But what happened? Between then and now. My brothers and sisters, can I lay something on you? Look at the next verse. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born. Whew. And the night which it was said, There's a man child conceived. He was got wounded. He was happy. Church going man. A shouting man. But somebody by the name of Elihu, his friend, oh, y'all, I, I, I wished I had some help here. His friend came to him. Look at. Verse 32 and verse 2. But then was killing the raft of Elihu, the son of Barachah, the, the, the boozite of the kindred of the ram against Job. This is boy. This is ride and die guy. But he done got kindred against Job. Because he justified himself rather than God. There are folks who will justify themselves rather than God. And you say you're, you're your friends and they'll talk to you and tell you stuff. That'll go down into your spirit and hurt you. Come on. After Elihu got through talking to Job, Job had another attitude. He had to bless God. I came in this world naked. I'm going out naked. I just want to bless God. And all of a sudden, his friend come and says something to him that turned his mindset, that gave him a wounded spirit. Ain't that something? But ain't God all right? Somebody say, ain't God all right, though? 
But once Job realized what his friends had done, he said, you know what? I should have stopped at that time. We should have been praying and fasting. I should have been li listening at them. See, when friends come to you talking negative, say, I tell you what, since you're going to wall in what's already wrong with me, let's just get out on our knees. Help me pray. Can we just call a prayer meeting right now? I don't want to hear the negative stuff you got to say. Can we just get down on our knees and just start calling on God and say, God, can you just come through for us? See, sometimes we get involved in the negative stuff and we ought to tell folks, no, come on, baby, help me pray. I'm praying right now. Just help me pray. See, a good friend will pray with you. Ain't God all right? See, when you get discouraged, when you get wounded, then you got a friend. You ought to be like 1 Samuel 28 and 16. If you're a good friend, you're going to be like Jonathan was with David. Look what he said in 1 Samuel. He said, David was greatly distressed for the people spake to stone him because he, he, that he should have all the people that was grieved, every man for his son, for his daughter, but David encouraged himself. I, I want the next one about Jonathan, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 23 and 16. I, I, and Jonathan saw his son arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. Ah. If you're going to come to my house, don't come talking negative. Come strengthen my hand. I, I don't need nobody around me talking negative. If you're my friend, come to my house and tell me, Pastor Hair, you, God got you. You're going to be okay. Everything is all right. You are the head, not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. He's the basket in the store. He got your children. He got your back. He got everything. And let's just join hands, Pastor. Let's just join hands and just call on the name of the Lord. Because I know God is all around you. He keeping you. He keeping me. And we in this thing together. Ain't nobody going down. If you go down, I know you my leader. I'm going down. And I will not let you go down. I'll hold your arms up in the midst of this battle like they did Moses. I will not let you go down. I got you. I don't care what nobody say. In the name of Jesus, you got to strengthen your neighbor. Somebody shout glory. Elihu should have come and strengthened Job. Instead, he told Job, Job, you must have sinned. Uh -oh. Now, uh -oh. you're going through something, you'll beat yourself up. Because you're already beating yourself up. All you need is one more Negro to tell you you're wrong. And that, and that one that's close to you, it goes right to your heart. Now, them, them folks out there just saying something. But church folk, them the ones that you got to say, you, if you say something negative, that goes down. Because people believe in you. Huh? I don't know about you, but I believe in you. When you believe in one another, that's what worship is all about. We are one body, one soul, and one spirit. He said when one person moan, you moan with them. And when they laugh, laugh with them. If they shout, shout with them. That's why when I see people running, I start running behind them. I'm so stupid. I don't know why they're running. But there's a Blake doing this house. And, and waiting for them. Guess what? I'm next in line. I want my breakthrough too. So if they're getting one, hey, they must, he must be handing them out. When they was giving this free food during COVID, Come on. Everybody in line. If they're giving out something free, then nobody say nothing about nobody lining up and staying all day long either. He praying for folks. I, I'm just going to go sit down because the line taking too long. No, you didn't go sit down when they had all that chicken in them boxes. Let me tell you something. You, you stayed in that line till you got your free chicken and whatever for you to get your miracle. You need to stay in line till you get your miracle. And then nobody have to call you. 
Didn't nobody have to call you to tell you that it's a miracle service. Guess what? It got, guess what? All it was was it was on Facebook. But nobody didn't tell me church was going on. No, didn't nobody tell you that? You strolled out there. Oh, they, then you, you reshare. They're giving out boxes. And peasant broke. I wish I had. I need you to share that God working miracles in Pleasant Grove on Sunday morning. Somebody shot glory. Look at your neighbor. It's a neighbor. It's a neighbor. Happiness is a choice. Huh? You choose to look like you've been eating sour quenches. You woke up this morning and, and had an attitude. Said, you know what? I ain't going to speak to nobody this morning. You choose to have an attitude. Happiness is a. Now, they said this, and I'm, I'm just, I come in a bad, it's just a bad day. You chose to be mad. Can't nobody make me have no bad day. You know why? I start my day off right. Before I leave my home, I get in my mirror. And I say, look at him. If my hair ain't right, I, I, I got my own clippers. I line it myself. It ain't right. Get back to nine again. Because you say, oh, he be cut. His hair he cut all the time. I credit myself. The, 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 the man I went to, he didn't cut. So I go tell that man off now. I learned how to cut myself. So I, Because he can't make me feel bad. Here's a young lady that was a bad person when she grew up. She was mean. Her family hated her. She was really stupid. You know one of them crazy people that nobody don't like to be around. One day, God saved her. God delivered her. She was in her own home, and she decided her mom and dad, it was a 50th year anniversary. Don't try to do that for us. That's a long time. It's going to be 50 years down the road before a 50 year anniversary. Uh, she decided she's going to do a 50 year anniversary for her mom and dad. They've been married 50 years. And she said, I want to show them what God, because God had given her a ministry out of this world. She said, I want, I want to show them what God has done for me. I want to go back home and I want to show them who God is, what God has done for me. She was in in the house, and boy, she said, okay, she got her hair. The thing was supposed to be at 3 o'clock. She got her hair all straight and everything. Boom, boom, boom. It was like 1 o'clock. And she, she sprayed the, the holding spray in her hair. Y'all know about that, don't you? Come to find out it wasn't holding spray. Thank God, all right. It was something else. Hair lopped it. Time so I went and she tried to fix it, but it just went. It, went in there. it just kept falling. Y'all ain't never had no hair keep falling, have you? Well, you do like my wife. It don't work right. Just go in there and find that other wig. And, hey, God, all right. It kept falling. It kept falling. No, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let you out of here today, but I feel like preaching because we we, we got to get. Uh, Spirit. We got to rule our spirit. Here she is. She, she couldn't get it straight, so she decided to get in her car. She get in the car, whoo, trying to get there on time. All of a sudden, the car break down, run hot. She got out there, got her hands all in the oil and all that, tried to get it. Hey boy, finally, she got it back going. She get there, and she got her bag with her, because she said, I'm going to get there. I'm going to go in the bathroom, and I'm going to Get everything straight. Y'all know how y'all do. Y'all got everything with you. Can't get in the car. I got this bag, that bag. We ain't going nowhere but stay one day. But, man, I'm talking about I'm going like, I don't know about you all, but I know in my household, if I go stay overnight, Brother Rollins, it's like we're going for three months. She said, put my bag in the car. It's ten bags. I said, what you? 
Well, that's my makeup bag. Okay. Uh, and, and she got all this stuff in the bag. It gets there and she tried to do everything right and come to find out the lotion stuff she had to try to do her hair back right and that stuff had doing that car thing and them busted and spilled everywhere. Everything she tried to do didn't work. So she just said, you know what? You know what? I'm just going to go out here and just enjoy. So she goes out there and just, just let it go. You know? And enjoyed herself. And, and they said, oh, they realized then she had really changed. Because if that stuff been messed up like that back in the day, she'd have been cussing and fighting. See, she, she thought it was going to be one way, but God got it another way. Come on, somebody. See, you got to realize that sometimes you're going through stuff. Don't get all upset and get in a bad spirit. You got to keep the right spirit, and all of a sudden, what you're trying to get accomplished, God already got it accomplished. It ain't the way you're thinking. Ain't God all right? Yes, he's all right. Somebody said you got to rule your spirit. How do, you, how do you do it? Happiness is a what? A choice. She made a choice to be what? She could have been sad and left and not been there with her mom and dad. But she said, I don't care about how I look right now. I know how I feel. I love my mom. I love my dad. And just me being here is so important to me. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes. Proverbs 17 and 22 says these words. He says, a merry heart do it good as what? The reason why some of us sick, we too sad. Just start being happy. You'll find yourself not having headaches. You'll find yourself not having arthritis. If you get, come to church and get happy and you start running around, them legs will get loose. Sometimes when I'm going through stuff, I say, you know, when I get to church, then I'm going to start jumping around. And then, you know, what? I, and then I get back. And I said, you know, yesterday my leg was kind of, but what happened? In the midst of praising God, Brother Redfield, it went away. When I, when, I, when I chose to be happy in spite of and let God work, it went away. You can be sitting in church and nobody got to lay hands on you. And if you just lift your hands and just be happy, your circumstance and your problem, they'll go away. Proverbs 19 and 11 says these words. He says, the discretion of a man defended his anger. Wisdom. You don't let people get you angry. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. You know, people do crazy stuff. And, you know, just look over it. Huh? Learn how to look over stupid stuff. Don't let stupid stuff come in your life. He said, if they're going to be ignorant, let them be ignorant still. You go on and just, just enjoy life. Don't let people bring you down to where they are. Look over them. Ain't God all right? Somebody shout, happiness is a choice. You see, if you want to be happy, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 and 6, he said, Timothy, you do this. But godliness with contentment is great gain. What you saying, Paul? Don't look at what nobody else got. As long as you got life, health, and strength, as long as you can come to church and oh, come on, don't be so anxious about this and anxious about that. Just be content wherever God got you. Whether you're up, you're praising. Whether you feel like you're down, you don't never feel like you're down. You just feel like this is where God got me. I'm still going to praise him. How, how many say contentment? Learn how to accept where you are. Because wherever you are, and if you're God's child, he's got you where you are. It's hard to accept that sometimes. Hallelujah. 
Look at that next verse, though. If you could pull that next verse up, it, it would make it more clear. I didn't put it on there. But let me tell you, that next verse would make it more clear. In verse 7, it would make it more clear because he said, you know, people get in their lustful ways and they go after things and it caused them to be suffering. Because he said, for Job said, he come here naked, didn't he? He said, for we brought nothing into this world and we can what do not what? We can't carry nothing out. And verse 8 says, and having food and raiment. Oh, how many got food at your house? You got food? Oh. <laughs> how many got food at your house? Oh. Everybody got food. That's why I'm content. Because I know I can come to your house and eat. <laughs> Ain't God all right? If you got food and some clothes, what are you saying? Why are you crying? If you got food and clothes this morning, you ought to be shouting. And then if you got clothes, you ought to be shouting because you know you got life. Because why would you have clothes if you ain't got nothing to put them on? Huh? You still alive? He said, be content. Ooh, I'm shouting right now. Guess what? And a blessing gonna come your way. God gonna supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory because you ain't gonna go without nothing when you learn how to praise God. Somebody ought to tell him right now, thank you for my food. Thank you for my raiment. I got clothes on my back. I got food on my table. I got a little something other to drink. <laughs> Whether it's Diet Coke or regular Coke, you got something to drink? Somebody shout glory. And you know, sometimes you, he say he'll give you the desires of your heart when you continue. I'm sitting there, I said, you know, I just love a fireplace. I love uh, being warm. I love having some wood. And I said, you know what, I, God, I'm going to have to go out in the country go out there to mom's old place and cut some wood, split some wood, and I really don't have time. Big Simmons over there it called me up. I'm at school. He said, I'm, I'm in your yard. I'm bringing you some wood, splitting you. I said, ah, I'm the I just started running around the gym. Ain't God all right? Not only did he bring it, he split it and stacked it. I ain't call him. I ain't ask him for no wood. Let me tell you what you do. If you, be, if you just thank God for what you got, and I ain't too proud to go cut no wood, but God said, you ain't cutting no wood. I got you. Somebody shout glory. And there's a miracle in this house waiting for you. Hallelujah. Somebody child glory. And let me let me share with you that you got to understand. You got to learn how to be content and God going to take care of you. When you start praising me for the little things. Look at your neighbor and say just praising for your raiment, praising for your food. Let me tell you, when you when your spirit is down, let me tell you how to build your spirit. James 1, 2 and 4 says, Building your spirit, my brother, and count it all joy. Whatever you're going through, I don't know who's going through something right now, but count it all joy. Whatever going on in my life, I said, Lord, I thank you. When you fall into divers temptation, when you get to the place where you look like, man, I, I may be going down, the devil trying to tempt you, devil, say, just count it joy. Then he says in verse 3, knowing this, you got to know this. You have to know this, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. He, you're going through because he's trying your faith so he can work something good for you. You're going you're gonna to have patience after you come out of this. 
Nothing you go through going to bother you after you get out of what you're in now. If you, if you know this, that he's trying you to give you patience. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, if you want to build your, your spirit, you got to learn how to forgive God. Somebody said forgive God. Somebody said, ooh, forgive God. Yes, you're blaming God for a lot of stuff. You, you need to put God's name in a blank and say, God, I forgive you. Because I've said you put me through this and you did this and you did that. God, I'm sorry. I got mad at you, God, and I went home and I sat down. I'm speaking to you because I felt like you let me down. Tell God you're sorry. Then you'll start building your spirit back. Then tell yourself, forgive you. Forgive you. Stop beating yourself up. You beating yourself up. And the devil's trying to tell you this and tell you that, tell you that, and this and that. About you, that you're so bad. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, God, I can't do enough. No, you never can do enough. Just accept that he is your righteousness. Accept the fact that God got you. He died, Jesus died for you. You, you, can't, you can't make yourself holy. I don't care how much you try to do right, you can't do right. But if you go and tell him, God, I got to forgive myself. Because I'm beating myself up. Because I, I said, I ain't going to never be able to do this. And I ain't going to never be able to. And I, and I got to realize, I ain't. You got me. You would never be able to do it. But if you turn it over to him and accept his righteousness, he'll cleanse you. Somebody shout, glory. glory. Not only forgive yourself, thirdly, forgive other folk. Put a Make a sentence, put a blank there, and put somebody's name in it. Whoever it was that hurt you, you got to forgive them. I didn't say you got to go hang with them. I said you got to forgive them. Whoever it was, it may, it may have been a family member. I don't know if it's a boyfriend, it's a husband, it's a child. Whoever hurt you, forgive them. Uh-oh. That's the only way that you're going to build your right spirit back. Because as long as you're sitting in church and holding that in your heart of what somebody done to you, you will never have the right spirit. You end up dying, them folks still walking around. Because that thing on the inside of you will be like a cancer eating at you. You having high blood pressure, heart attacks, and headaches, and heartaches, and everything else. And they run around out there having a good time because you ain't forgave them. Once you forgive those people, guess what? Your life will be so much peaceful. And I'm not talking about, well, I, I didn't, every now and then you bring it up. Once I forgive people, I don't, I don't worry about it no more. And it's, it's my, I know sometimes I've uh, treated people so good. And my kids said, Daddy, you still talking to that person? How are you talking to you? Because they be wanting to whoop him. I, I, I ain't there yet. I, I, I'm not saying, but they, 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 they've got that, that back. But now they don't do it as much as they used to. They have grown, but they used to say, Daddy, why are you talking to him? Ain't God all right? I said, he ain't hurt me. He hurt himself. What he done to me. And me loving him, guess what it's going to do? If he don't get his heart right, it's going to heap coals of fire on his head. Ain't God all right? You don't treat people the way they treat you. You are a born again believer and you got to have the right spirit because when you get the right spirit, it'll heal your infirmities. Sickness and disease got to go when you got the right spirit. That's what the scripture said, didn't it? 
It says it will heal the infirmities. Got to forgive. Proverbs 18 and 14. Look at it again. He said, the spirit of a man, what is going to do? The spirit of you. The spirit of you. The spirit of you. Going to sustain your infirmities. Hmm. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? That's why I'm closing. Your spirit can sustain infirmities and sicknesses and all that stuff. But who can bear a wounded spirit? You can't handle that. I, come, I stopped by this morning on my way to heaven to tell every person in this room, you can help yourself sustain an infirmity, but you can't help yourself when it comes to a wounded spirit. What you saying, Pastor? Have you told us to have the right spirit to help us? No. Who can bear it? The only one can bear the wounded spirit. Help me pray. Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can heal a wounded spirit. Because your spirit get wounded, you can't do nothing. When your spirit get wounded, you're going to be just like Elijah. You're going to go in a cave and hide yourself. You just got to shouting and calling fire down from heaven, and now you're on the run, and you're in a cave saying, ain't nobody else trying to do nothing for God. Because his spirit is wounded. He don't want to, Jeremiah went and hid in the cave and said, I'm not going to preach your word no more. Because I'm depressed, my spirit been wounded, ain't nobody else doing it. These people don't want to do right, church folks crazy, and they running me crazy. His spirit was wounded. But when you have a wounded spirit, you got to be like Hannah was. Her spirit was wounded. She could not bear a child, even though her husband sitting there and had all these other things going on. Other woman mocking her every time she went to church. But her spirit was wounded, but she didn't stop. She kept coming to church and said, you know what? I'm going to cry out to God. She would fall on the altar. She said, my spirit wounded because I need God. Ain't no way I can do this by myself. I got to have God to heal this wounded spirit. She cried to God every time the synagogue opened. She'd get out on her knees and call on God. When your spirit is wounded, you need to talk to the Lord. Her spirit was wounded, but she didn't, she didn't talk about her husband, Elkanah. She talked to God. She knew he had hurt her. Somebody's husband doesn't hurt you. Your children don't hurt you. There's a lot of hurt in your life. People have hurt you. Family have hurt you. Church folk have hurt you. But you got to learn how to get on your knees and talk to God when you're wounded. He's the only one that can handle your wounds. You got to be just like Jeremiah was, but then you got to be like Jesus was. Somebody said thank you. You got to be like Jesus. The ones that he had all around him. The one that he sat at the table and ate out of the same dish. Broke bread together. Walked around for three long years. They saw him heal the sick. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him feed 5,000. They saw him dry up a woman's blood that had been running for 12 long years. They saw him go to the tomb of Lazarus and say, Lazarus, come forth. They saw all of this stuff. But the one that dipped in the cup with him sit there and sold him for a few pieces of silver. Would not not wound you. Can I get a witness in here? No one in the Bible said he was wounded. 
for our transgression. Ain't God all right? He was wounded. He felt betrayed and he felt just like we feel. When the people we count on turn their backs on us. Has anybody in here ever had the folks you really relied on to walk away from you? It may not have been a friend. It may have been on your job. You relied on people, but they let you down. Ain't God all right? It may be in the church. You relied on folk and folk let you down. But I stopped by on my way to heaven to tell somebody you got the power to rule your own spirit. Don't let nobody cause you to act ugly. Let them know that this joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you. This joy that you have, the world can't take it away. Oh, Lord. I'm going on to close this morning. Can I take my time? Well, you need to have a spirit like Jesus had. You know what he said? He had his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, stay here while I go pray for one hour. Well, he went over there and he got down on his knees and he began to pray because he had been wounded. As he was praying, uh, he prayed. Well, you know when somebody got your back. Well, when he got to praying, uh, he came back to see what the disciples were doing. But his disciples were sitting there fast asleep. And I heard Jesus say, you can't stay awake one hour while I pray. Ain't God all right? Is anybody here that'll pray with me for one hour? Ain't God all right? Do I have anybody here when you're going through hell and high water that'll pray with me for one hour? Say, Pastor Hell, I stand with you in the midst of any storm you go through. I wish I had about five people here to know that God will sustain you in the midst of you being wounded. Ain't God all right? Well, he said, well, since you can't stay awake, oh, Lord, sleep on, sleep on, because I know what I got to do. Well, in order for me to keep a right spirit, I got to go back and pray a little while longer. Ain't God all right? He went back and uh, he prayed uh, a little while longer. He prayed until sweat dropped off of his body like blood. He prayed all oh, Lord, until his spirit got right because he was wounded. He prayed until he said, Father, it's not my will. It's your will. Let your will be done. In spite of it all, they relied on me. In spite of it all, I'm going to let you work. If I let you work, everything going to be all right. In spite of it all, I'm going to let you work. Ain't God all right? Somebody in here is going through something. But in spite of it all, if you let God work, how I many know he will give you a right spirit? Ain't God all right? If you let him work, weeping may endure for a night. But oh, Whoa, whoa, joy comes on in the morning. Oh, Lord, if you let him work, you can go through the fire, but the fire won't burn. 
make God all right. If you let him work, he'll turn you midnight into day. If you let him work, he'll turn it around. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the God I serve. If you get the right spirit, he'll turn it around. He will bow your wound spirit. Because in Psalms 147 and 3, it says he worried. He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. I wish I had somebody here. You've been wounded, but he'll heal the broken hearted. He'll bind up your wounds. Your heart been hurt. But he'll bind them up. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You ought to get out of your seat. Say, he'll bind my wound. Ain't God all right? I don't care how much you've been hurt. He'll take your wound. He'll bandage your wound. He's close. Somebody say, glory. Ain't God all right? In Psalm 34 and 18. He said, the Lord is nigh unto them that's broken hearted. You need to know God is by your side. He's right there. He's right there on your side. He's right around you. I'm so glad he's close. To the broken hearted uh, and he's saved he'll save with a concrete spirit uh, if you got the right spirit he'll be right by your side uh, tell your neighbor tell your neighbor uh, he's right by your side tell your neighbor he'll be right there won't he do it won't he do it uh, if you know you do it uh, Wave your hands, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Is he all right? Is he all right? Anybody on this side know he's all right? Oh, he's not me in the midst of the storm. Whatever you're going through, he's not you right now. All you got to do, have the right spirit. Here's that right spirit. I get joy. 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 When I think about what he done for me. Anybody know he done something for you? Raise your hand. Say he got, he's all right. Say yeah. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Somebody ought to say yeah. I feel like preaching. Yeah, yeah. Come on up. Somebody say yeah. Lift your hands, say yeah. If you're broke down, if you've been hurt, say yeah. Tell that devil you can't stop me. God, 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 been good to me. When you've been hurt, look back and think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Your soul on a crowd. Hallelujah. 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 Has he been good? 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 It's been all the way around. Say he's good. He's good. He's good. Somebody tell him thank you. Tell him thank you right now. 
Lift those hands to heaven. here today for every wound, every hurt, every setback, every disappointment where your heart has been hurting, that you're trying to cover it up and trying to move on. He says today that it's over. It's over. And those who are watching right now, you've been blessed by this ministry. You've been hurt, but God told me all across this year, this ministry has been a blessing to your home, coming to your home. And I know they have the site where we give to the church. You can sow seed and say, since this has blessed my home, I want to sow seed to this church. You can do so. You can do so by looking at the sites that we have for you to sow. Sometimes you have to sow your way out. Hallelujah. When God been good to you, this is the season of giving. He gave his son. He gave his best gift. And in December today, those of you watching by Facebook and YouTube, send a donation to Pleasant Grove East Macomb so this ministry can keep continuing to go over the country and through this city. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray a miracle for you right now. And God will heal your wound. Some lady watching me right now that you, 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 you've been wounded by your children. Yes, you've been wounded by your children. You thought they was going to be this and that, and they have come out not what you expected. But God said today, he's going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. And it may be you here in the building, and I'm speaking to somebody that, as I prophesy, and I speak this word, it's not only to you. But you who are here in this building, in Jesus' name. Because when you're wounded, you can't move forward. You've been hurt and damaged. You can't patch it up. Jesus is the only one that can bear your wounded spirit. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. Let him do it. Lift your hands to heaven. In spite of it all, let him work today. Let him work. Let him work. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. Go ahead and, and let him and talk to him right now. As you have your hands lifted, begin to talk to him about what's going on with you. It ain't nobody's business. It's what's going on with you. Talk to him right now. Talk to him. I declare today, today is a day that every hurt, every hurt that you've experienced, it can be released with the supernatural anointing that's in this place today in the name of Jesus. Release the hurt. Release it. Release it. Release it. My sister, he made it my sister, come. Everything come, can you come? The devil tried. Come, come, come. Come God on. Made it fail. You come stand behind her. This is God a miracle. God made it fail. I say it's miracle time. God made it fail. Yes. Everything the yes. devil tried, God made I it fail. Your hands to God made it fail. He made it fair. Oh, yes, he made yes. it fair. Everything the devil tried, God 
God made it fair. God made it fair. God made it fair. God made it fair. Everything the devil tried. God made it fair. God made it fair. God made it fair. Yes, 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 yes. Everything. Yes. The devil tried. Yes. God made it fair. Yes. God made it fair. 